Test 73, section four, question 21. The only songs Amanda has ever written are blues songs and punk rock songs. Most punk rock songs involve no more than three chords. Right away, I would go, yeah, but Amanda could violate that in every single one of the punk rock songs she's ever written. Uh, that applies to most punk rock songs, but that's a huge universe of punk rock songs. And within that huge universe, you know, most only means 51% or more. And Amanda could be comfortably in the 49% who would never do that, as far as we know. So if the next song Amanda writes is not a blues song, it probably will not involve more than three chords. I actually have two objections here. The first one I've already made, which is how do we know that Amanda is not an exception to this rule about most punk songs? But the other problem that I see is that we're going by her history. The only songs Amanda has ever written are blues songs and punk rock songs. But there's nothing stopping her from writing an opera tomorrow. And this argument assumes, you know, that she must be writing punk if she doesn't write blues. But just because she's only ever written punk and blues does not, again, mean that she can't write, uh, compose a symphony tomorrow. The reasoning in which one of the following arguments is most similar to that in the argument above, it's a flawed argument. Not only is it a flawed argument, but it's a double flawed argument. And the perfect answer would be an, an argument that displays both of those flaws. And I could come up with an, with an example explanation. In fact, one just flashed through my head. It took like two seconds. And I thought of, you know, how about like if it was a uh, Nathan has only ever done hiking or golf for recreation, most golfers uh, carry a full set of 14 clubs. So if Nathan doesn't go hiking tomorrow, he'll probably be carrying a full set of 14 clubs. That has both flaws at once because I might be an exception to the rule about golfers who carry 14 clubs. I frequently carry fewer. Uh, also, even if I only do hiking, even if I only ever in my life have done hiking or golf, it's totally possible that I try swimming tomorrow. I, you know, just could be the case. Okay. So, and that it takes 30 seconds for me to explain it, but it actually just was a moment, you know, fully formed in my head. I saw that example. So now I've got the given argument, which I know has two problems. I've got a sample argument that displays those same two problems. Heading into the answers, I have a real good idea what I'm looking for. A, the only pets the Gupta family has ever owned are fish and parrots. That sounds pretty good so far. Most parrots are very noisy. That also sounds pretty good so far. In order for A to be correct, it just needs to say, so if the Gupta family doesn't get a fish, they're probably going to get something noisy. And it says, so if the next pet the Gupta family owns is a parrot, but that lacks the first flaw, the fir or the, uh, I guess it was the second flaw that I described, which was, how do you know that they don't get a dog this time? And it, it doesn't have that flaw in it, so that's not gonna be the answer. B, most parrots are very noisy. The Gupta family has never owned any pets other than fish or parrots. Again, perfect setup, as long as the conclusion says, so if they don't buy a fish, they're probably gonna get something noisy. And it says, so if the Gupta family has ever owned a noisy pet, which is looking backward instead of the next song Amanda writes or the next leisure activity that I do, it should be the next pet the Gupta family gets. And that one's going backward in time. C, all the pets the Gupta family has ever owned have been fish and parrots, good so far. Most parrots are very noisy, good so far. So any pet the Gupta family ever owns that is not a fish will probably be very noisy <sighs> closer. The problem is that it's about all their future pets instead of just the next one. We were talking about the next song Amanda writes. I was talking about the next leisure activity I do. C's talking about all of their future pets. D, every pet the Gupta family has ever owned has been a fish or parrot. Most parrots are very noisy. Perfect. So if the next pet the Gupta family owns is not a parrot. No, but I want it to say if it's not a fish. So that's wrong. E, the Gupta family has never owned any pets other than fish and parrots. Most parrots are very noisy. Perfect so far. 
So the next pet the Gupta family owns will probably be very noisy if it is not a fish. And this is one where you're going to have to read almost every word of uh, every answer, but eventually we can conclusively eliminate A, B, C, and D, and I can 100% positively choose E here. Uh, parallel reasoning questions, they are time consuming, but many people eventually realize that they love parallel reasoning questions because they're able to conclusively solve them. I mean, it's just like, hey, I know that the argument that was given had two flaws. I can predict the rest of the correct answer. Like when I read the first two sentences, which by the way, the first two sentences are the same in A, B, C, and D, and E. The evidence is the same all the way down. It's just the conclusion that's different. And you can predict what the conclusion needs to be in order to make both, both of those flaws. He's the only one that does it. So that's the answer.